Dawn, Ashley May here with the Daily Racing Form DRS Race of the Day. This Sunday, May 21st, is out on the West Coast at Santa Anita Park. It's their sixth race. The Desert Code, $100,000 stakes race going six and a half furlongs on the downhill. And we'll take a look at this field. Six horses have been entered. I think it's a very competitive bunch, especially the three towards the inside. But even going more towards the, the middle or the outside of the starting gate, uh, you look at the number five acquired class, a very flashy maiden winner last time out. Conclude looked tremendous. Two starts back, tackled stakes competition for the first time last out. So maybe some room for improvement from him. But the three on the inside have been battling it out in several starts now in a row. So it may be a compact field, but I actually think there's a ton of talent in here and I'm excited to see how things shake out this Sunday but let's dive right into it here with the number one valiant surfer for Jeff Mullins. I've been very impressed with this horse. I know he's just two for 11 in his career but earlier on in, in his career he started at Gulf Stream Park. He was sprinting and then they sent him out to the west coast and he was going a mile for a long time and there were a couple starts where he's close or kind of picking up the pieces late to get a minor check in there but more recently since cutting him back I've really liked him anywhere from going maybe five and a half to six and a half furlongs. I think these races set up really nicely for him. And we'll actually take a look at his most recent performance, the John Deere, which is a key race for several runners in here. And when I mean several, um, we're talking about four of the six runners in the field, that being Valiant Serve, First Peace, uh, Mas Rapido, as well as the number four conclude. So uh, just looking here at this stretch run and, and how horses are picking it up late, Valiancer was dead last early on. He is a closer, a pretty true closer, at least in his last two. And I thought he made a pretty nice run in the end, but looking at the top two, uh, first piece and Mas Rapido both had the jump on him in terms of position. And I think, you know, everyone kind of races pretty strong in here, but first piece is able to draw clear in here by just over a length and Mas Rapido is pretty clear of Valiancer. So they up being, being able to divide themselves in the stretch but I like the way that he re ran in that race I think going back two starts ago at Santa Anita I know it was going five and a half but the pace set up for him he got a beautiful trip I, I will say the one concern I do have is that he does draw to the inside because he doesn't have a ton of speed and it is luckily for his you know circumstances there's only five horses to his outside so uh, he shouldn't get shuffled too far back he really can't with a compact field but I would prefer him to be drawn elsewhere in here, but I think the pace should end up being, it should be decent for him, so he should be able to make that late run. The number two first piece, we looked at that replay, and the John Shear was able to win in that most recent outing. I thought it was a really nice ride for Mike Smith, a very patient ride, and was just the best. Prior to that was second in the Eddie Logan behind Classical Cat, and this is a horse that's been very consistent since getting onto the turf. You really can't knock any of his efforts, and it seemed like looking at his races late as a two-year-old, he was going a mile in those races, and he was almost getting the job done, but just didn't have the punch in his last two, and I actually didn't mind the cutback at all to six and a half. It suited him well. He was able to rate a little bit more than he had been able to in a couple of those other starts so he showed a little bit of a new dimension uh, and I think he's going to get a really nice trip in here just off the pace the number three Moss Rapido this one trained by Bob Haas Jr. is a two-time winner in the career and one of those wins came last out we'll take a look at that race it was a lot of optional claiming event going six furlongs over the good going at Santa Anita back on May 6th and just looking at him here in, in the trip that he ends up getting I thought it was a really good effort, um, you know, saying it overall. I thought it was a good allowance race. I don't think it was great, but I do think it was good enough. He ends up getting an 82 buyer speed figure, and he's just the best in this field. I will say, looking at some of his other efforts, he's come up a little bit short. He's been a little too far back, but I thought Kent Sormo really got along well with him in that most recent outing, and I love that he's booked to ride again. So I think there's some upside for this one. I also think, just looking at the horse's races, I think there's some talent there that we haven't seen yet. I just have a feeling his best races are still ahead of him in his career. The number four, Conclude. This one trained by Phil D'Amato, one of two in the field, I should say, trained by Phil. Uh, this horse was a nice second on debut, but really dazzled in that second career outing, going five and a half furlongs at Santa Anita back on March 4th. A runaway winner in the end. It was a field of 10. A 96 buyer speed figure was awarded to the son of collected. Then last time out, he went off as the favorite in the John Shear. And just kind of looking at the trip in there that he got, um, I, I thought he needed to show a lot more. Um, he it didn't really pan out, though. He was doing more of a stalking trip than what we saw in the previous races. And it just, 
really didn't work for him and I thought he fell a little flat late in the race. So I'm excited to see what he'll be able to do facing stakes competition for the second time. It's only his fourth career start and I have to think that he's going to be a little bit more eager early on because the trip that happened last time out, it just didn't work for him. The number five acquired class, this one out of the Peter Miller barn. Didn't really show much in those first two career starts. Obviously, the second one was better. Um, certainly room for improvement, but this horse had a ton of time off. You look at that debut, there's really nothing to take away from it other than a disappointing debut for a horse that took a lot of respect. But then he went to the sidelines. We didn't see him from May of 2022 all the way until late March. And he certainly improved. He split that field mid, you know, kind of mid-pack. I thought he had a little bit of trouble in that race. Really a good learning experience nonetheless. And then to see him here on April 22nd. We'll take a look at that replay. Uh, I thought this horse was very impressive. You know, this was a big field. He had to kind of work for the lead early on. He gets out there and then he just blasts away from the field. He ends up being a three length winner. He's awarded an 87 buyer speed figure. Just a very different performance. And I wonder also looking at his races. First time he didn't have Lasix, didn't have Blinkers, Lasix second time, and then finally Lasix and Blinkers in that most recent outing. So maybe he needed those Blinkers because obviously he was quick out of the gate. He was really sharp and was able to take them in front end fashion. And then rounding out the field, the number six, a ransomware. This is the other Phil D'Amato trainee. Was second on debut going six furlongs, was able to actually graduate in that second career start going the mile and got a really nice trip, just a couple of lengths off the pace setters and got up in time to win by a head. Thought it was a productive race. The second place finisher came back to win next out. And then this horse tried grade three competition in early December at Del Mar and didn't necessarily race poorly, but also just didn't race that well. So I think this horse, you know, had some problems facing stakes competition for the first time, has been on the sidelines since then. The barn does well with this sort of length of a layoff, and he could certainly improve. I just think looking at some others that have had those starts this year, um, I'm going to kind of lean in that direction. So that's the field of six in here. Don't forget, this is the DRF's Sunday race of the day, so you can get free PPs. Got to remember to scan or click the QR code below. And I think looking at the field, I actually really struggled, um, you know, to kind of narrow it down to my top pick. I was torn between about two or three horses, and I ultimately went to the two first piece. I love what I saw in the John Shear. I thought Mike Smith gave this horse a perfect ride, and I'm hoping in terms of kind of the pace scenario that this horse is just off the pace, ready to pounce in the stretch and get the job done. The one Valiant Sir I mentioned, I think this horse... We haven't seen his best races. I think he's intriguing. I know he's just two for 11 in his career, but if the pace is right, he'll certainly be trying to pick up the pieces late, and I think he can at least be in the money. Mas Rapido, another one. I think best races are ahead of him. He comes in here fresh off a win, which was a confidence-boosting effort because look at his races But before that. He was just getting denied by pretty small margins, and I think um, a horse that's just three years old, once in a while, they need that confidence-boosting effort, and I think Mas Rapido should perform similarly to how he did last time out and then finally the number five acquired class this is a jump up this horse was able to really impress last time out breaking the maiden in impressive fashion but now going to stakes competition where other horses have already tried stakes races i'm curious to see what we'll see because last time out an effort like that would certainly put him in the hunt i just don't know if he's going to be able to handle this kind of class test uh, in his first test against stakes competition so for me top pick ultimately somehow i got there and it's the number two first piece good luck